created these non-starters. We've created these sacred cows. And that's the greatest takeaway I need you to go away with today. That it's okay to rewrite the rules. I don't want the sales guy that can sell anything to anybody anywhere. Ice to an Eskimo, all of that stuff. Because he's not going to give me what I need. I don't need a chameleon. I need authenticity. That is the impact point. You are after influence. You are not after selling. You are not after closing. You are not after horsepower. I don't care who tells you that. That will get me a deal today through horsepower. But what I want is multiple deals through finesse. I was energized and I was also so impressed by his command of the stage and you really felt like this guy knows his stuff. Uh, and he could really help you make progress in your business. He really drove home how important it is that we take charge of what it is out there about us. And the piece about not keeping yourself a secret, that was a great insight. The next phase of this is going to be how I can become more likable. And when I talk about being likable and the likability factor, what I'm talking about is how you can double down, ultimately, on your personality. See, the mistake I think people make is they try to change themselves. The introvert wants to read a book and connect on how he's going to become a master networker. And all of a sudden, they're trying to throw themselves in these events, and they do terrible with it. There are plenty of people, if you're in business, that like you. The question is, how are you getting more of those people to come to the marketplace? Who's got a LinkedIn profile in here? LinkedIn? So all too often people come to me, they tell me how great they are, all the stuff they've done, they send me their resume, I go on their LinkedIn profile, I scan all the way down, I get to that area that says recommendations. And there's two. <laughs> so that leads me to believe a couple things. Number one, nobody likes you and you're lying. Or two, you've been keeping yourself a secret. So the other thing I ask you to do is not keep yourself a secret from the marketplace. Find the people who like you, connect with them, and get them to talk about it to increase your likability factor. There's people that will work for you, that work for you right now, that are not doing you a service, that is not advancing your growth or concerned about the customer experience at the level that it should be, but they get paid and they got some benefits. So they'll hang out in the weeds. They'll hang out in the area where they're not too far on the front that you're noticing and they're not too far behind that you're noticing. Anybody looking to stack up more of those people. See, that's part of the danger. It's not radical change in your store. It's these little points. It's these turning points that shift, can shift the wind from what a customer hears, what action they take, getting them to do what you want to do next, using horsepower versus finesse. That, I can sell anything to anybody person. I don't care. This Put me in front of a cup. That is buyer beware in today's market. I just want to say that in 20 years of being in this business, I just heard from Corey the probably the most impactful, most dominant, convincing amount of information that I've ever heard. That's one of the early mistakes that I made, is we were chasing the dollar. Anybody who would pay, we went to try to deliver services for. In the early days, that's what it was. What do you need? What, the training? Okay, well, we can get over right over there. So the problem was, though, we were doing work we hated for people we didn't like. I wanted our clients' success for them more than they wanted it for themselves. Corey left me feeling fired up. Man, that guy is just straight up dynamic. And I'll tell you what, the intellectual property he just gave me, I don't think I can get a million dollars for. I'm gonna use it immediately. He is such a trip. He was so funny, uh, dynamic and passionate, but the, I think the audience, based on what I saw, where they were not only just engaged, but they were having a good time. I'm telling you what, the hands were going everywhere, everything was going great. He's a phenomenal speaker. Because here's what we love to do. We love to get creative. We're gonna use horsepower to get the customer on the phone. We're gonna stop calling from the dealership. We're gonna get out our what? Cell 
a cell phone. Call from a number they don't recognize. <laughs> because that was the problem, right? <laughs> Hello? Gotcha! <laughs> Corey does an awesome job getting the whole audience uh, fired up. I mean, any great instructor first, you have to kind of, uh, you know, motivate people, and then you can educate them, and then you can activate them, and nobody does it better than Corey. Uh, he had the whole audience uh, waiting on his next word. He was spectacular. I really enjoyed watching the audience react to Corey's style. He's such a motivating, motivating kind of guy. Everybody just kind of feeds off that. So add some great content like he did, and I think uh, everybody was taking notes and is going to walk away with some behavior-changing opportunities. Your ability to be bankable is how you monetize this whole package. And you have to be relevant. You have to be the representation of who and what it is you are selling or being. A networking event, a guy comes up to me, he hands me a business card, he says, I'm a life coach. I step back for a minute, I look at him, I'm looking at his shoes, they're kind of run over, I'm looking at his shirt, it's a little tattered, looks like he could use a haircut or two. In my brand of sarcasm, I step back and I say, full time? <laughs> so he's taking it back. Now, the key is I went on to mentor this individual for the last couple of years. So I, I tried to bring him to the frame of mind where he realized that he had to be what he was that he represented. He couldn't fix my life if I didn't feel he was in charge of his. How many people enjoy a good steak here? Steak? Steak, steak, steak. So I want you to imagine for a second, I've cooked the steak exactly how you like it. You might like it medium rare, you might like it medium, hopefully not well done, but let's assume I've cooked the steak exactly how you want me to cook it. Maybe I've added some sauteed onions to it. I've got it exactly how you want. You might be thinking about it right now. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go in my kitchen and get out the fine china and serve the steak. No, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go outside. I'm gonna go to the garbage can. I'm gonna pick up a trash can lid. I'm gonna turn it over, and I'm gonna put that steak on it, and I'm gonna serve it to you. It don't sound too appetizing anymore, does it? So here's what I wanna leave you with today. I wanna to leave you with, don't serve up your ideas, your great products, your great services, all that you are. Make sure, in your message and your brand, you're not serving it up on a trash can lid. Thank you.